if you're starting a startup, you should, there's a series of tools that you should have before you even write any code uh, to keep track of uh, what's going on in the engineering systems that you're building. And Thousand Eyes is one of those. It's a way to see what's happening with all of your uh, uh, systems around the world, whether they're on Rackspace Cloud or Amazon or running in your own premise. Um, it gives you visibility and it should be one of those thing, things that you put on a screen overneath, overhead the engineering team. We're going to talk to Thousand Eyes right now. Who are you? Hi, uh, my name is Mohit Lad. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Thousand Eyes. Uh, I finished my PhD at UCLA a few years ago and started the company about three years ago. We help provide visibility into performance problems with uh, cloud and black box applications. Yeah, and um, why do we need this? I, 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 I have a hint, and I sort of laid it out, but why do we Great need question. This? So a few different reasons, uh, and if you think about how enterprise IT has evolved, uh, you, 10 years ago, when you wanted an application, you would walk up to IT and get them involved in deploying something because you need resources, you need servers, you need, you know, if you think about a CRM application. But what's going on right now is people make decisions without involving IT. So if you want a CRM application, your VP of sales would go and say, I'm going to buy Salesforce and I don't need my IT to be involved. What happens as a result is the enterprise starts consuming applications that are outside their environment. And as an enterprise, you have absolutely no idea what goes wrong when your users start to complain about performance problems. So yeah. Thousand Eyes is about bringing that visibility that you're missing when you move an application to a cloud uh, instance back to the enterprise organizations. And what we're doing is providing deep visibility to both the cloud providers as well as the enterprise IT because we believe you need to work together to solve these problems. Now are you selling just to enterprise IT or because a lot of startups you know uh, are are building even if you're a two-person startup you have to b uh, bring some data from Factual and maybe something from Twitter and maybe something from right. Google Maps maybe something from somewhere else and you need the same kind of visibility on the network of what's, why isn't my map working right now? I, you know, and you need to know what's going wrong. Right? Absolutely, and uh, what we're building is more generic. It's helping you get the visibility no matter whether you're a small company or a large company. Our focus in the early days was obviously companies with more complex networks. So yeah. you know, think about the large social networking sites which have multiple data centers and so on. Uh, but if you're building an application that has critical components that are outside your environment in your backend stack, then it makes a lot of sense to use Thousand Eyes. So you're absolutely spot on in that. Uh, a lot of startups, when they start off at a two-person company, uh, performance is not their biggest concern. They're just trying to build something up. But the minute you start thinking about customers and revenue, uh, you need to think about Thousand Eyes. I, I think there's a, a, a new tool set that startups need to put in place before they even write code. You know, a new relic was just here, and yep. they're one that watches the health of your code. If you check in some code, does things get faster or slower? If something stops working, is it, what's wrong? And you do the same thing for networks. You, you let me watch my, where this data is coming from, if I have two offices, and one's not working, one is, what's going on? How did you start on it? Because you, you have some stories about why you started this company, right? So. A few different things come to mind. Uh, the first thing was uh, we worked at UCLA solving some pretty hard problems on getting visibility to the internet. And what we realized is very few people actually understand how networks work, especially outside their environment. And one story which uh, really resonates well with our entire organization is when we moved into our first office in San Francisco, uh, the lights would turn off after six and you would have to pick up the phone and dial a sequence of digits to turn them back on again. Uh, two days after manually doing this, uh, our CTO wrote a script which used Twilio to automate this process, and which worked great for a few weeks, but after a few weeks, the lights don't turn off, uh, to don't turn on after six, and that was really strange. So we started looking into what went wrong, and it turned out that Twilio was using Amazon, yeah. which had an outage. So it was really interesting, and it's, it struck a note for us that an outage with Amazon, which we didn't even know was in our environment now, in our flow of what is required, was causing our lights to go off. And 
Surprisingly enough, two weeks later, the lights go off again, and we just looked at each other and said, we're sure Amazon is having an outage, and it actually was. So it's one of those things where what impacts you starts to tell you what's going wrong, and wow. it's really interesting. Uh, well, we know they're down because people start calling. <laughs> you, know, you know they're down when you get more revenue suddenly coming up. It's so. not revenue, it's calls. <laughs> it's Help, calls me. <laughs> Help me. Help yeah, me. These guys don't answer phones. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so if we do correlations, I think uh, when our lights went off, your call volumes were pretty high. Yeah. How much does this cost? Uh, how do you set, how do you monetize and how do you? Sell? So we have two models. Uh, we have we collect data from public infrastructure that we control. So think about it as agents from Thousand Eyes sitting across the globe and telling yeah. you how the health is from a global standpoint. And this model is meant for people who have, who actually own the applications who serve it to the rest of the world. So think about the top SaaS providers and you know even online properties they would use this model. And the pricing is based on how much testing you do. So in many ways, it's like an Amazon model where it's how much time do you use on 1000 s to test. We have another model which uh, involves our private agents going into your enterprise offices. And that starts at $99 a month per agent. So if you have, let's say, 10 branch offices that you really care about, you can get started for $1,000 a month with okay. the base package and can give you visibility into as many applications that you want. Let's see, we have offices in Virginia, London, Chicago, Austin, San Antonio, San Francisco, Sydney, and Hong Kong, and I'm probably missing a couple. So, well, that's so we're already up to eight hundred dollars a month. Okay. Right, you're up to eight hundred dollars a month, okay. and then the solution. Uh, right What's now, this agent that I have to put in? So it's a virtual appliance that uh, or a Linux package, and it's very easy to deploy. And one of the things we found wrong with very clunky enterprise software was uh, three problems. One is the products just suck; they're just really bad products, and the other is the deployment models are very complex. So they would sell you expensive software and then they would, you would have to buy expensive professional services to install it. And so our appliances, the virtual appliances, our agents are, are designed in a way where it's really easy. It's click and drag and install. And so once you put that up, you can start setting up tests and figuring out uh, not only a benchmark to every cloud application that you're using, uh, even as a cloud provider, your own systems and your own health. Uh, we, we should take a look at what it does, because it, let's uh, um, look at a company that you've set up and see yeah, what it looks so like. Yeah, so this is a very simple example, and uh, but it will give you an idea of what visibility you can provide. So what, what are we seeing here? What you're seeing on the screen is a world map representing the offices you're collecting data from. So this would be your enterprise footprint. And then we're looking at an app here, Kepasa, which is being used by these locations. The timeline on the top right shows you what the metric is for uh, this specific period of time. So we're looking at availability. It's very simple. It's really saying if the service is up or down. Yep. And right here, you see a dip in availability. So when I click on that, I can see that four locations are now unable to access this application. So they and turned red. They turned red. It's very simple. And then the errors are happening in the connection phase. So they can't even establish a connection to the web servers. What we can do with Thousand Eyes is go beyond just an application up or down and really see what's under the surface. So, is this something I could leave up on a screen above my development team, it you is. Know, in my NOC or whatever? It is, and we have you know several SaaS companies, the big ones, actually having a dedicated Thousand Eyes squeeze in their NOCs, which is which is really cool to see. Um, and it turns red then in real time. Right. So if it so hits it turns, one of these, it turns red and you react. Uh, and you can not only just go from the knocks usually are built on these procedures where if something turns red, I need to call this guy and tell him, uh, you know, get some advice on what's going on. But because the solution is so simple to use, they can actually do the first level of troubleshooting themselves. Let's see. It. So, so this thing, in this particular red. case, your IT organization got an alert saying this app is down. And what you can do now is see if this is a network issue. So we're going to the network end-to-end -end metrics. And now the metrics are just pure network metrics, loss, latency, jitter, and bandwidth. You see a spike in packet loss. The same four locations are seeing a 100% packet loss. So you know it's a network issue. The next question is where in the network is the problem? So you can dig deeper and go into the path visualization. And what we have done now is expanded your line of sight to go all the way to the cloud provider. So in this particular case, the first thing you notice is there are two web servers being used for the app. One of them is based in this ISP called InterNAP. The other one is based in this uh, provider called Neospire. InterNAP right? is in Vegas. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and inside uh, the data centers there. Well, it's cool. you're talking about InterNAP? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, switch or InterNAP. Right, right, right. right. 
So, uh, and one thing we notice here, there's one node that is dropping packets. So when we click on this, immediately you know that that's the problem spot. Even though this is outside your environment, it can show you that there's 92% packet loss going on, and that's where uh, your red locations are being impacted by. Right. And what you can do once you've identified so the you problem. So you know who to blame. Exactly, so the idea is, you're gonna yell no matter what, right? Yeah. Uh, the question is who are you gonna yell at? Is it your IT guy, is it your upstream provider, or is it you know, the, pro the cloud provider that you're using? So our job is to make sure that you focus your yelling on the right people, and, and so yeah. in this particular case, uh, what you can do now is... Now it doesn't tell you really what's going on, and just that that node is uh, right. causing the problem. Yeah, and so it tells you there's a specific portion in the internet that's causing a problem. But you can see from this instance that it actually is in the environment that your cloud provider is using. Yeah. So you can click on share this uh, screen and then put the app here that you would uh, be sharing with and type a message and then say share. And what will happen I can see these showing up in TechCrunch someday. <laughs> if if uh, somebody's down, that, then Yeah, so you'll these links are really interesting from that perspective, <laughs> uh, where you can just send a link. And it's very interactive, but your cloud no, no, provider... I, I talked over you. What did you, you just copied a URL out of your app, yeah. and you, you're sending it to me at Rackspace and yelling at me, and yeah. you're able to... And I, I can click on that link and see... Well, sh show me what I see if I open that link up. Yeah, so when you click on this link, so yeah. this is in your browser, that's what you're going to see. And you don't need any account 2000 eyes, right? You're receiving yeah. this link. And what you will see and is I see the same spike. thing. Yeah, and you see the same thing. And you can interact with this in a manner. You can go back in time. And what we have done is because this topology is really complex, we let you interact it with it from the enterprise side. So that's exposing the hops over here on the enterprise network. Yeah. Or you can expand from the cloud provider side. And you can do all kinds of complex stuff. So as a simple example, let's say you know that there is a red dot here, right? Yeah. But you know at this instance of time, there was, let's say, issues going on with Level 3's network. And Level 3 is a large tier 1 ISP. What you can do is just click on this and say overlay Level 3 on top. And so now you've overlaid Level 3's environment on top of this graph. And you can see the red links have nothing to do with Level 3's environment or the red nodes. Yeah. And that's disconnected. So there's a lot of funky stuff you can do as a, as a network guy or as a person wow. who's handling the operations. You, you get this power to actually look at the internet. Really can I publish this publicly? Can I, can I put that on TechCrunch? You can put it on, on Twitter and so on if you want. You can put it on TechCrunch. Because that way if a, if a huge network is down, I can just say, hey, uh, something on the internet's down. Here, here take a look. It is, and so you know, we did a. Of course, a, if the whole internet's down, we can't see your web page. Yeah, that's true. And that's, <laughs> that's, uh, we hope that doesn't happen, but uh, and we often get this question as well that we ourselves are a cloud application, right? And so people ask us like, "You're a cloud application. How would you make sure that our applications are up?" But the reality is, we built it in a way where the agents actually always are collecting data, even if our cloud application itself is down, because they operate in a manner. Uh, we've captured really interesting events all the way from DDoS attacks yeah. where a bank is being hit and we can see what the bank is doing to uh, mitigate the attack. We can see which vendor they use and we can see which aspect of that vendor's mitigation is not working. So it's, it's really visual, but it's built in a manner where it's not, not about pretty pictures, it's about yeah. helping you solve problems. That's really, really cool. 99 bucks a month per office. Huh? Um, so do you guys we, use cloud applications here? Like do you we, use, uh, right. Well, well so we host a cloud app. Right. We host you do, but clouds. from a hosting standpoint as well. And we and use then, Salesforce, and we use right. uh, and Workday, and we use, you know, we use a lot of, uh, we use a lot of different apps, uh, you know, uh, from uh, all sorts of different companies here, yeah. Um, and we have our own internal systems that are all running on the cloud as well. And, um, yeah. and our customers all, have systems that are sprayed across the internet, you know, whether they're in their own premise, whether they're in our right. premise, whether they're in the public cloud or our private cloud or their own, you know, uh, cloud or a, a public cloud somewhere else like at Amazon. Yeah, and one of the, the other things we're seeing is this notion of transparency. So not only do hosting providers, and I'm sure Rackspace as well, you guys, I'm sure, have put a lot of effort into building a really good monitoring framework, yeah. but sometimes there are things outside your control, right? Yep. The internet is having a bad day. And so uh, one of the use cases around Thousand Eyes is helping your customers understand why they're having an issue. And no, it's not just great. about, it's more about transparency through and through. 
more than anything. I like it, and as the age of context comes along, we're gonna we're gonna uh, have customers all over the world. You know, right. uh, Facebook has a billion customers, and the guy in India might not have the same experience as it, the guy in. Uh, and you in bring UK. up a really good point because what we see is. In the United States, when you're in the country itself, you don't think about performance problems as much. But if you go to India, China, Malaysia, even simple websites take a long time to load. So global yep. corporations or corporations that are actually serving a global audience really needs to understand what are the bottlenecks from a network standpoint. And the demands on the network are really, really high in these regions. So that makes sense. It's interesting. Um, do I, it, so I put this agent, This it's just a box that goes into my uh, data center or in my rack here. Um, anything else I need to know about it? So you, you have two modes, right? So if you're rackspace.com, you yeah. don't even need agents. What we can do is you just use the uh, website to enter a particular URL or a server or IP address, and we'll start tracking performance from a global perspective. So you'll immediately know if your users from different parts of the world are having issues because of an upstream problem or so on. Got it. Uh, but if you actually want to do more custom stuff where you want to deploy it in an environment which is closed, let's say, right, like your IT environment, uh, or track an internal application, and we don't really restrict to just web applications, so think about if you're using VoIP, uh, if you're using WebEx and you're using all these things, then VoIP is really interesting because if you have a slight network problem and a word gets dropped, the entire conversation context can change, right? So if your yeah. boss is calling you and saying, you're not getting a bonus and the not gets dropped in that conversation, the whole, the whole perception is different, so. Does it, can you watch different ports? Yes, you can. So uh, you okay. can set up a test to any particular application port as long as it runs TCP right now. So it's just a quick highlight here. When I add new test, you could do a pure network test to any TCP port, so that works. Or you could do a web test and then select network measurements enable, okay. which gives you this kind of X-ray view of what's going on under the surface. And Does it show you speed between nodes or yeah, bandwidth so, available? Right, that's, that's a good question. Um, and we're getting pretty technical here, which is uh, something I like. But there are four metrics we track at the network layer. So there's the loss, which is uh, just what is being dropped. And ideally, this should be 0%, but there's latency. So mm. if I go into this view here, and let me say I'm just interested in seeing what are the links that are less or greater than 60 milliseconds in my entire dependency. I see 14 links with delay more than 60, and when I click on that, that overlays those 14 links. So now I can just mouse over this link here and see it's between Dallas and Phoenix, and the latency is 153 milliseconds. Wow. So, it's so this really lets you run your network and really see what what needs to be improved or what, right. who you and need to deal And the analogy I use is uh, when you think about your own monitoring stack, right? You're, it's like peeking out of your window, looking at traffic and making a judgment call on, oh, it looks, you know, it looks nice in my neighborhood so I can start driving. But then the next turn you make, you hit a roadblock. And so what we want to do is almost give you a Google Maps-like view of the entire environment. So first you know where the problems are. But then you can start to do more interesting things around how you want to route around the problems and fix things and so on and so. Not it doesn't let you reroute around things. It so. gives you the intelligence right now to help you make the decisions. Got and it. part of the stuff we're doing right now is working with our customers to understand how they really start to use the data and what they can do. Uh, the next phase, we, be do we would be doing more interesting things around changing and making a positive impact on the way your performance is perceived. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Uh, where do we learn more? Uh, go to our website or follow us on Twitter. It's www.thousandeyes.com. Thousandeyes.com. Yeah, and Twitter is Thousand Eyes. Thank you so much. It's Thanks. Pleasure.